Hey, this is Oscar with Control Your Health. So today we're gonna to do a follow along joint mobility routine that you can do every single day. And what we're gonna be doing is taking our joints through their full range of motion, one at a time. Uh, they are called controlled articular rotations, C-A-R-S or CARS for short. And this is important to do every single day, take your joints at least one time through their full range of motion because then you can day by day improve the capacity of that joint and make it a healthier and better joint. And then the second reason is that it is also a great maintenance tool so that on a day by day basis, you can see if you are in feeling better. So if I did a joint circle for my shoulder today and my shoulder feels good, but then tomorrow I do the same joint circle and it doesn't feel as good or it could feel better. And this way you can see how you are assessing your joints on a day-to-day -day basis and maybe you need to spend more time on a particular joint. So this is a follow along routine and I am going to do it in a toe sitting position for part of it. You can also do a heel sit. There's a lot of benefits to kind of stretching these, these tissues out, but for some of you, that will be a little bit uncomfortable. And so for those, I would recommend doing a tall kneeling position or what we call a half kneeling position. And even some of these things can be done from standing. So the importance is that you're not going and putting yourself in a painful position. But for now, we're gonna start with our neck in, our, in my toe sit. Okay, so from here, I wanna be nice and tall. I wanna brace my abs a little bit as I take my joints through their full range of motion so I avoid compensations. All right, so you're gonna bring your chin towards your chest. And then you're gonna drag that chin across the collarbone over the shoulder, up to the ceiling, around to the opposite shoulder, and back down. Collarbone, back to the bottom. We're gonna do it one more time, same direction, and just remember to avoid compensating. We wanna keep our torso, think of your belly button pointing straight the entire time. So I'm bringing your chin towards your chest, across the collarbone, over the shoulder, up to the ceiling, around, opposite shoulder, collarbone, and back down. And now we're gonna rewind, opposite direction. Two things also is that you wanna make sure that you're breathing, inhaling and exhaling through the movement. We're going again one more time. And the second thing is, is that if you take your joint through its full range of motion, and you're feeling any kind of discomfort, just make a smaller circle. Even if you move your neck this way, if that's what pain-free is for you, then that's where you wanna start. The next thing we're gonna do, and I'm gonna go into a tall kneeling position, is we're gonna work on our thoracic spine. We just did our cervical spine, our neck, we're gonna do our mid and upper back. So you're gonna give yourself a big hug, putting your hands around your shoulders, squeezing your butt tight, abs are tight. You're gonna flex forward at the mid back, and then you're gonna to turn to one side as if you were wringing out a towel, if your spine was a towel. Lean to that side, and then we're extending our back. I'm keeping my neck straight as I circle around. Opposite side, and then bringing it back for one more circle. Again, I'm trying to point my hips straight at the camera, belly button to the camera, and I'm breathing. For the sake of this, I like to use both sides, so I'm, now I have my left arm on top. Flexing forward, turning to one, the opposite side, leaning to that side, and then circling around. Again, this is the thoracic or your mid to upper back. And then coming back around one more time. And for the sake of this video, we're just doing two rotations, two controlled articular rotations for each uh, joint. You can do up to five or as many as you need to. I'm gonna show you from the side. Next thing we're gonna do is our shoulder blade. So we're gonna bring our shoulder blade up by our ears, back, down towards the back pockets, and forward. We wanna make that a nice smooth circle, keeping your arms straight and elbows straight. I'm squeezing my fist so that I can keep a little bit of tension as I move through this movement. The analogy would be as if you can imagine the air 
is maybe 30% thicker and you're moving your joint through that thicker air, okay? On the other joint, I'll show you facing forward. So I'm bringing my shoulder blade up, back, down, and forward. And then reverse the motion. Try to keep your elbow straight. So we've gone and done our neck, our mid back, our shoulder blade, our scapula, and now we're gonna do our globally, our entire spine. I'll show you from the side. This is also called cat-cow. We're gonna try to do this segmentally. So you're gonna flex your spine. Draw your belly button into your spine. Tuck your tail, tuck your chin. And I'm keeping my eyes in between my legs as I extend my low back. So my tailbone goes into extension. You can almost visualize your belly button, or if you had a belt buckle, spill into the floor. My ribs spill into the floor. Chest. And then finally, my neck. And now I'm fully extended. And now segmentally, I'm gonna start from the tailbone, tucking my tail. As long as I can, I'm looking up. I'm flexing in my low back, mid back, upper back, and finally my neck, and I have to look back down. One more time, you wanna think of each vertebrae moving one at a time. It may help to visualize in sections, belt, belt buckle towards the floor, ribs towards the floor, chest towards the floor, and neck pointing towards the floor. And then reversing it, the back of my neck being pulled up, my mid back being pulled up, low back, and finally my tailbone tucking under. And over time, you'll start feeling that segmental flexion and extension of the spine. Okay, next thing we're gonna to move to is our shoulder itself and do a full shoulder circle. So I'll show you from two different angles. The first one is facing you. I'm gonna take my arm, keeping the elbow straight so that my bicep is lined up with my ear. Once I can't go any further back, I'm gonna rotate in so my thumb starts pointing towards you, towards the camera. And now I start circling around, my center line facing forward so that I don't compensate. I'll do one quote unquote bad rep. So we don't want this to happen, twisting. We wanna keep our center line moving forward. You'll hit a roadblock. You wanna internally rotate that shoulder and start circling around so that you end up with your thumb facing back. Then we reverse it by bringing the shoulder into extension. Hit my roadblock. I'm gonna externally rotate and bring it around. And do that one more time. Keep in mind that if your shoulder is feeling any kind of pain making a big circle, if you've got to start here in a small circle and work your way to a bigger circle, that's fine. Pain-free is the goal. And also keep in mind that I am doing the toe sit. You can do this from standing, but the more joints I take away, the more stability I'm able to create here. So from here, I'm bringing my left arm up, turning, circling around, keeping the elbow straight, and I'm gonna repeat that one more time. Visualizing that the air is just a little bit thicker, so I'm kind of fighting through with control, almost like if you were stuck in mud. And now reversing it, thumb is pointing back, I hit my roadblock, I rotate out, and come back up. Full, controlled range of motion, but even more importantly, full pain-free range of motion. Facing back towards the front, we're gonna do our elbows. So the elbows, we wanna give them a little bit of rotation. I don't wanna rotate from my wrist. I want my forearm and my two bones here to be rotating. So I'm gonna keep my elbows close to my side. I'm gonna make two fists. 
and I'm gonna rotate out as much as I can. As if I was wringing out a towel and squeezing out as much as I could, then I come down, turn in as much as I can, and come up. And I'm still squeezing my fist in. Out, down, in, up. And then we reverse that. Turning in, I come down. Turning out, I come up. And so these are our elbow cars, elbow circles. Next is going to be our wrists. So I'll just show you from this angle, I would want my forearm to remain flat. If you have something that you could balance on there, a phone is a good thing because it would just fall right off. Just imagine you're trying to balance the glass there. You can also hold on to your wrist, which is to my forearm, which is what you can do. So I'm gonna squeeze my fist and imagine if my knuckles were drawing a big circle. So I flex my wrist towards the pinky, make it a big circle two times. And you may notice that one wrist is better than the other. So I reverse directions, two in each direction, facing forward just so you can see the difference, flexing the wrist towards the pinky, drawing as big of a circle without moving that forearm. And then opposite direction, flex, circle around. Okay, it's pretty much most of our upper body there. Now we're gonna do our hips. And I will show you from two different directions again. So now we get into our quadruped pos position. Back should be flat, like a tabletop. Elbows are locked out. I'm gonna bring my right knee up as if I'm trying to bring it up close to my armpit without rounding my low back. So what we don't want is this, All right? Keeping the back flat, I have to brace my abs a little bit. I'm bringing my knee up towards my armpit and then my knee comes out position two. Now my foot starts turning up towards the ceiling and I circle around. Same direction one more time. If you're moving your right knee, your left elbow is going to want to bend, so just keep that left elbow straight. And opposite direction. Heel comes up, the knee comes out to the side, I turn my foot towards the floor and then bring my knee forward and repeat one more time. Trying to keep that low back as straight as possible. I'll show you from the left side in this angle so you can see what the leg position and hip position looks like. Back is flat, knee comes forward, out to the side. What we don't want is this. So again, knee comes up, out to the side, circles around. One more time. As smooth as a circle as you can make. It helps if you visualize your knee as drawing a circle, even though it's a hip circle. You have two circles. Okay, moving on to the knees. So for your knee circle, you have your kneecap here. We've got a little bit of space. And then there's a bone, the pointy protrusion here called the tibial tuberosity, which is kind of the beginning of your shin. So from the tip of your knee, all the way down to the bottom of your shin, what you want to do is move this all as one unit. So I'm going to grab my leg to lock this in. And then I want that shin to be able to move side to side. So the knee circle will be picking your foot up off the ground, flexing your toe towards your shin, turning the entire shin over towards the pinky side, raising your leg, turning towards the big toe side, and back down. One more time, same direction, and then opposite direction. So my shin turns, this is like an L, moving as one unit, and then back out. So this is the same way we did the elbow circle, you're doing the knee circle, okay? Show you on the other leg, and I'll show you from a different angle. So again, this shin bone is what wants to move on its own. 
my kneecap stays still and my shin is moving inside of there, okay? Flex the toe towards your shin, towards my pinky toe, up towards the ceiling, towards the big toe, down. So we're going in both directions two times, flexing my toe, going towards the big toe, up towards the pinky, down. So that's the knee circle. I'll pull my pants up because also what we want to do is be able to take the kneecap, keep the leg straight, and be able to push that kneecap around. Almost like if it's a clock, I'm pushing up towards 12, towards one, and just going around and making sure that that kneecap moves and it's not completely tacked down. This is a good assessment also for your knee health. So I will do that also on my right knee. I'm using two thumbs to push forward to the side and just kind of go in a full circle, making sure that the kneecap can move around a little bit, okay? Last two things we're gonna do is for your ankles. So for your ankles, you wanna bring your foot forward enough so that you can put the ball of your foot on the floor, but can't put too much force down. So if I walk my foot forward, I'm able to keep my toes down on the ground, but I really can't push hard. So I'm kind of reaching the limit of my extension of that, of that uh, angle. So what we wanna do is flex your toes towards your shin. Now that your shin bone is not gonna move. So I'm gonna keep my hands on my shin. Turn towards my big toe press down like I'm pressing on a gas pedal, and then circle around. And just take that ankle through its full range of motion. I'm trying to press it towards the floor, which we already determined that's about as, much, as far as it can go. So I flex towards the pinky, down, and around. Two times. And last ankle. So moving my foot forward, I can get my foot on the floor, but I can't really put force, can't push too much force down. So flexing, circling around two times, and then the opposite direction. And remember, we wanna keep our shin from moving, just the movement coming from the ankle joint. Finally, we also need to be able to move our toes. So if you can, keeping your foot flat on the ground, you want to pick up your big toes and then press them down. Pick up the big toes, press them down. Now I keep the big toe down and lift up the little toes. And repeat. And then we also want to have all the toes pressing up, big toes come down, all the toes pressing up, little toes come down. So there you have it. Full joint mobility routine you can do every single day. First few times you watch it, it may take you a little bit of time to get through, but once you get in the habit of doing it, just to do two full joint circles for every joint, should take you under 10 minutes and it's something that you should do every single day.